Although I'm tempted not to because my fellow Southerner did not wear a seersucker today, I'm going to defer to uh, uh, Senator Tuberville. <laughs> I've got two suits. I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for having this this hearing. I spent uh, 35 years with the youth of this country in, as a coach, educator, and uh, this is not just a crisis that we have mental health. It's an emergency. We got huge problems. This is probably the biggest problem we have in this country. It's getting worse every day. I saw it change in just a short period of time. Uh, the number one commodity that we have in this country is not gold and silver. It's our young people, and we're destroying them. And we're sitting back and watching it happen. I've seen prescription drugs take over our youth, especially a lot of the kids that I work with. You know, we've ruined the nuclear family, and that's where a lot of this has got to come from. I counted up uh, yesterday 32 mental health programs that we have in this country. 32. We spend tens of billions of dollars. We're not making any progress. We're going the opposite way. Uh, we have all kind of addiction. I talked to a, a sheriff last week in Montgomery, Alabama, and he said, Coach, I, I'd never heard the word fentanyl to two years ago. Now, that's 95% of the drugs that we have in our schools and on our streets. The biggest drug we got is this right here. We all got it. There's not a person in here that doesn't have one of these. I'm guilty like everybody else, and I stay on it, and I think everything on there is true, but it's not. But our young kids think that it is. That's the problem. And we got to get control of that. And a lot of it, that's what we're talking about here today, is loneliness. And... Uh, we can agree on some of that. We have a program in Alabama that's called Hershia uh, that our state mental health department is running through our children's hospital. Uh, it works to connect interested primary providers with mental health specialists across the state and operates as sort of a command center uh, out of the hospital in Birmingham. Uh, kids experiencing these, all the issues that they have, uh, they're connected with pr providers that are close to them, whether it's rural or or, or inner city, uh, money for this particular program has tripled in the last year in, in a bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Now, I will tell you this, we, we, we can afford a lot of things around here, but we cannot not afford to fund mental health. We can't. We have to be able to afford it and through, through uh, situations like this. So, uh, Dr. Burfey, uh, are we tracking the successes and failures of the rest of the billions of dollars that we spend? Are we tracking that? Is it where it's working? Uh, have, have you got people that's doing that in, in, in your line of work that's helping us track the money going, and is that money helping to the degree where we can see success? Well, thanks, Senator, and uh, I wish I could circle, underscore, star so much of what you just said, because uh, you're right on, and you're right that the most important asset we have is our kids. Uh, and we've got to do more to protect them. I also agree with you that when we do put funds toward a cause, it's important to know, is it actually working? Uh, is it delivering the benefit? And you know, while our office, the Office of Surgeon General, does not conduct evaluation trials, that's not what we are a resource to do, we do have colleagues across the Department of Health and Human Services at NIH and at SAMHSA who do conduct evaluations of programs uh, so that we understand what's working, who it's working for, uh, and what more, what's missing. Um, but I think, Senator, to pick up on something else you said here as well, I, I think, and, and I like the program you mentioned in Alabama in terms of the concept of, of building a network and an infrastructure so that primary care doctors in particular and others aren't trying to manage all this on their own. Uh, like programs like the Pediatric Mental Health Access Program, for example, uh, have been very helpful in making sure that those primary care doctors can get expertise, mental health expertise, into the clinic when a patient is there. And we do need more programs like that. But I don't think that we will be able to keep up with the sheer you know, disturbing trends that we're seeing in terms of increased mental health concerns unless we simultaneously attack some of these root causes. Uh, and you, know, you mentioned our devices, and in particular for young people, social media has become, I worry for too many of them, a contributor, an important contributor to their mental health strains. I also spend a lot of time with student athletes uh, when I travel around the country. I do roundtables specifically with student athletes. And many of them tell me that, uh, you know, that not only are they having a hard time sometimes getting help, some of them have incredibly supportive coaches and administrations, uh, others do not. You know, I, I had one football player who told me that 
uh, after having serious thoughts of taking his own life, he uh, approached his coach and said, and it took a lot of courage for him, but he admitted to his coach what was going on and asked for help. But as a response from the coach was, well, uh, you know, if, if that's how you're feeling, maybe this program's not for you. You should consider going to another university. Uh, and he was heartbroken. Now, thankfully, that's not the response that most kids get, but we still have more to do uh, in terms of making sure kids get the help they need. But if we can focus on making social media safer for our kids, if we can focus on rebuilding the social connection and community that our kids need, families are a key part of that, faith institutions are a key part of that, other community organizations like YMCAs, uh, Boys and Girls Clubs, these all play vital <coughs> roles in helping connect kids to each other, families to each other, but participation in them, Senator, has been declining for half a century, and it's leaving people lonely, isolated, and at greater risk for mental illness. Thank you, and one, one thing I'd like to say, I know we're over a little bit here, Mr. Chairman, but we have, unfortunately, people in this country that are born with a mental health problem, yeah. and we're trying to treat them with a lot of prescription drugs, and I think that's fine to a certain degree. Sometimes we're over-prescribing. But the problem is we're creating more mental health problems now than we're having young people born with mental health problems. And I think we all have to understand that. And if we'll start understanding that, I think we can understand the problems that, that we have to overcome. Because if we don't do this, now we're going to lose the country that we all grew up in. Because mental health is the number one problem in this country. Number one problem. And uh, we have to, and because it leads to everything else, it leads to so many things in this country that are negative. So thank you. Thank you for your answer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Casey. Mr. Chairman, thanks for having this hearing. I want to thank you and the ranking member for convening us. And I want to thank uh, both of our witnesses.